a report that found the Conservative Party chairman had breached the ministerial code multiple times in relation to his taxes. An independent inquiry was set up and it found that Zahawi's actions constituted serious failings, adding that his conduct had fallen below the high standard expected of those who serve in government. Well, we've been speaking to people in the former Chancellor's constituency to see how they feel about his sacking. He broke the rules, he deserves to get the sack, doesn't he? he? Everybody has got to pay their taxes, he didn't do it right, so he deserves a sack. Simple as that, same as anybody else, really. I think he should have resigned, really, and it's taken a long time. And again, again, I think, you know, it's been this big delay in, is he going to go, isn't he going to go? And nobody actually makes any decision until the public, you know, opinion becomes so strong that they think they've got to do something about it, really. So I wish they'd called a general election, actually, because I think, you know, we've got another two years, haven't we, of this mess, really. And, you know, I'd quite like to have a bit of a change. I think he had it coming to him. He should have I he think should he have resigned. Have he should have resigned at the been. beginning of the week. And it's not the first time he's it's, had it's... question marks about his team. <laughs> Joining us now, former special advisor to Mr Zahawi when he was Education Secretary, and that's Mark Lahane. Mark, very good to see you um, again on this. It was a very fast inquiry, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. I mean, I was on here last week and people were saying what should happen, should the Prime Minister sack him then? And I like a lot of people saying we need to wait and let this inquiry get, get to the bottom of stuff. It has done. The Prime Minister acted very quickly. It's a very sad situation on a personal level for Nadim and, and people that know him. Uh, but I think it's probably something that needs to be said. All the, all the newspapers in front of you here this morning have got Nadim on the front page, yeah, which and tells you it's a big distraction. The fact that there has been this independent inquiry removes the personal element, doesn't it? Because he does appear to be liked, well-liked across Westminster. But that is irrelevant. I mean, this investigation found that there wasn't one breach of the ministerial code. There were multiple breaches of the ministerial code. And the fact that the Prime Minister sacked him rather than waiting for him to resign is indicative, is it not, of how serious these breaches were. Well, there's, there's no doubt. I mean, I looked at, probably like you guys looked at the letters that were exchanged yesterday. Um, the investigation is quite clear that it feels there have been a number of breaches. From what I've read well, in the Well, it's the same breach a, m a number of times, yes, isn't it? Yes, that, that's, that's right. And I guess, you know, it, tomorrow is the um, final day for people to get their tax returns in. So I guess there's a lesson for all of us if we've got tax returns to make sure we know what we've put in there or indeed what our accountants or whatever have put in there. And if you make a mistake, you really do need to flag it up. Mm. Well, either that or Mr Zahawi is in complete denial of what he's done because in his resignation letter to the, to the Prime Minister as well, he makes no attempt to apologise for all of this. He made no attempt on the multiple occasions where he should have raised the fact that he was under investigation at all. So obviously uh, his recollection of what happened and how serious it was obviously differs from the inquiry. If that's right, and I read in one of the newspapers this morning that there's talk of bruised feelings by Nadim and, and the people around him that he didn't feel he got his chance to get across everything to the investigation. However, that investigation's happened now. Um, we've got to move on, I think. Um, Nadim's had to pay the price. He's made mistakes. He's paid the price. I think he'll take it on the chin. I mean, there's big stuff going on that's really important in people's lives. Paying your taxes is absolutely very important and declaring any mistakes is very important if you're in government. I get that. Mm. But this week we've got virtually a national strike. Uh, school, you know, half the kids in the country aren't going to get to school. The trains won't be working and so on and so on. There's big things we need to get on with. And I kind of understand why if you're the prime minister and you've had that return from the independent inquiry, mm. I understand why you probably need to be quite quick in uh, moving on. And I want to talk to you about the strikes a bit more in a moment, but just picking up on what Aim was saying about the lack of remorse. There was no apology at all. But more than that, he, he turned on the, on the media, talked about the fourth estate, and he mm. accused people that were investigating him, this particular journalist, of, of trying to smear him. Uh, now the Lib Dems are saying he's unfit to even serve as an MP. Would you agree with that? Um, well, obviously I'm biased because I work with him and I know the guy. I, I actually think the lovely thing about living in our democracy is the constituents, the voters, get to decide whether or not you're fit to be an MP. So I think we've just had this happen. I think there'll be lots of bruised feelings right now. Mm -hmm. I think we need to give people a chance to go away and reflect and then, if need be, the people of Stratford-upon-Avon, Nadine's constituency, can decide. But he's, he's, done, he he's done as an MP now, isn't he? Well, I, I don't know, you know, he's been a, he's, he's a very popular local MP. I know you had some voices there that weren't so keen. He's done a pretty good job. He's got a big majority. Yeah. Um, and I think that it would be a real shame if every time people made a mistake that they were thrown out of public life. I think we need more people in public life, like Nadine, yeah, who had success Mark, elsewhere Mark, rather if he, than fewer. if he had have done the bigger thing and stepped down and said, look, there's this investigation going on, 
Um, he could have had a chance to reinvent himself. The fact that you know he didn't declare, he carried on in office, and the um, the uh, the report's author, Solori Magnus, uh, he says under the ministerial code, ministers have a duty to be as open as possible with Parliament and the public. It does include a general duty to be accurate in statements to ensure a false impression is not given or maintained. And what he's referring to there is Mr. Zahawi. Um, just ignore the fact that he was under investigation as if he had done nothing wrong or it was no big deal when it was a big deal. Well, there's stuff in the press, isn't it, that suggests that he feels that he had shared information required and right. it wasn't passed on. So, uh, to quote the late Queen, recollections may mm -hmm. vary. And I think any of us, if we'd had allegations made against us in our jobs or our private lives, would probably want to have a chance for a process to run out so we can get our side of the story across. But we have had that now. Um, it did find against Nadim. Nadim's been sacked. That's very sad. I think it's a chance for everyone to go around and reflect upon it before any more decisions are made. Where I sympathise with them is that tax investigations are never simplistic. I mean, they're very forensic and there's lots of different connotations on them or reasons. But, you know, the tax people don't even understand the law, never mind uh, the rest of us. So... There may be little nuances in this where, where he has a defence, but, but by and large, it's a, you know, a massive penalty that they have uh, found against him. Um, Mark, can I ask you about these strikes then? Mm. Um, because, of course, Nadim Zahawi was an education secretary uh, in a past life. Some people are saying that it was whilst he was in office, they could have had more serious chats with the unions then. Um, look, the situation on Wednesday, I can say as a parent, is incredibly stressful for families because I understand that teachers don't have to tell the school or parents whether they're striking or not until the day. Right. So all of us are going to be turning up at the school gate unsure what the situation is and hundreds of children being turned away on the day. I think it's 4.5 million uh, children will be affected on Wednesday. Now, I know you're an outspoken uh, opposer of the strikes. Do you think they're right to be closing schools on Wednesday? Well, obviously, the right to strike is a really important human right. We mustn't forget that. The question is whether this is the right thing to strike about and whether it's the right time, and, and I'm not sure it is. And you've also made a very good point, which is that people are not obliged under the law to say if they're going on strike. Again, I think that's fair enough. However... Do you think that's fair enough? I, 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 I ask you this because I'm just on WhatsApp groups with lots yep. of parents. No one is opposed... And I haven't heard any opposition from the parents at my school to the fact that the school might be closing, but what they want to know is what their childcare provisions need to be on, mm -hmm. on the day. You're entitled to strike, but you're also entitled to be decent to the other hard-working family. That's what I was going to come on to say. So yeah. you don't have an obligation to tell the school if you're not going to be in, if you're going to strike, but I think you should. And actually, as a head teacher, where I dealt with a few colleagues on occasions that were called out to strike, they were fantastic in letting me know in advance what they were going to do so we could plan. I think the majority of teachers in the end will do the right thing. You'll, you'll have some hotheads, you'll have some activists that will be uh, encouraging teachers not to share with their schools what they're doing. But overwhelmingly, I think most teachers will say when the time comes but it is very difficult for head teachers because until you know who is in and who is out which probably isn't until the day mm. they will have to assume the worst and they'll hope for the best but they'll have to plan for the worst. Mark is the teacher strike solvable I mean the government is saying you, you hear the chancellor saying no more money it stokes inflation it's not going to happen it's not going to come from the public purse um, if well they don't pay teachers more money Where's the compromise going to be? It is a really difficult one because uh, when Gillian Keegan became the Education Secretary last autumn, she received a letter quite quickly from the NEU saying we need an extra £2 billion a year for schools. Jeremy Hunt in November found an extra £2.3 billion for schools next year and the year after. School funding has got tighter in recent years, but it's got a lot better than it was and it's going to continue to get better over the next few years. Even with inflation, it's going to go up beyond that. So I'm not sure that uh, the NEU just won't take yes for an answer. That's what it feels like. And the people stuck in the middle are the schools and the children being affected by it. There's no more money that's going to come now. If the Department for Education were to try and find more money for schools, for, for teachers' salaries, it can only come from the existing budget. Mm. But the existing Department for Education budget is pretty much committed already. There's not a lot of spare money in the middle going around. Mm. So I don't quite know where the unions think it's going to come from, which is why Part of me thinks almost they're, they're on strike for, for the, not quite for the heck of it, but because they want to make a political, po political point right now with all the other unions. Interesting. Okay. Thank you. Mark, thanks very much indeed. Mark's a former advisor uh, to Nadim Zahawi uh, and when he was the education secretary and he's a, a headmaster. Thank you.